In the second part of our wall painting game mechanic, uh, we're going to talk about how to integrate our custom shader that we have created in the previous video into a game mechanic using some scripts so that we can actually walk around this room and paint walls into different colors. Now I have created some simple UI that we are going to use to select a color using hotkeys 1, 2 and 3 and some uh, feedback UI so that we are going to see what's going on and the progress of the painting process. We have applied this material onto one wall and as you might recall in my project different walls are simply prefabs so we need to apply the same material onto each wall prefab. Now I have a couple of those, one is for the windows, one is for the uh, door and one is for the walls. So I will select my wall and since this is a prefab I will select override and apply to all. Now this will make all the walls into the, the uh, same color that we have set uh, inside our editor. Now we want to reset my um, the material back the color to be white and the paint color can be whatever we need to reset the paint amount. Now at runtime each wall prefab will receive its own instance of this material and then we are going to be able to paint each wall differently. Now I need to apply the same for my windows and the door uh, prefabs. So I will drag my shader paint wall material here and for the window I will go to the prefab and do the same and now I am ready and of course I want this pillar to also be up affected by our paint wall shader so I will apply it here as well and this is it. Now in addition to our material I have created a paintable object script that we are going to also drag on each of the prefabs for the walls. So let me show you what this script does. Okay, we are in Visual Studio and this is a paintable object script. Now to be able to actually access the material I will have a reference to private render object render and this way we will be able to access the material and the shader on this material. Now we are going to need a couple of variables. So paint delay will be how long it takes to paint the wall. A uh, private progress icon progress icon will simply be a UI icon that we are going to see and change the color. Uh, basically this will be a circle that will be filled in as we paint the wall so that we can show the player the progress of the painting. Now next we are going to have two uh, parameters that we are going to expose as public properties. One will be each painting boolean flag that will prevent us from painting twice the same wall and new color which will be a color and this will be the color to which we are going to paint our wall and this will be set by our player. And we are going to have two properties so uh, this is just to get this property so that we can read it from our player's script and we can set the color uh, we can set it through the property or actually I have created a set color method that we are going to discuss later. Last thing is a public event action on done. This action event will inform us when we are done painting when the wall is completely painted. Now in the awake we are going to get the object render get component render. We are going to access the render component of this object. We are going to then set the object render dot material set float paint amount equals zero. And as you might recall, when we have created our shader, we have created some properties in our blackboard. And if we select our shader in the project uh, window, we are going to see at the bottom that there are properties. This is a list of properties that we can access. We can set the main text, but what we want to affect is this paint amount so that we can basically set this amount to zero and we can progressively increase this value uh, in our coroutine in our script so that we have this game mechanic working in our game. Okay, great. So next we are going to access the progress icon, so find object of type progress icon. Of course this is only to show this some feedback that we are painting something and uh, when we are done. Next we are going to have a public void start painting method. We are going to use it or call it through the player action. So we are going to click on a wall and we are going to start painting. It will simply set each painting boolean property to be true since this is a private set. So we can only set it through the script and we are going to start a coroutine called paint coroutine. We are going to see it in a bit and this will basically make our uh, wall being painted. Now next we have a set a public void set color method that takes color to paint. It will be set to a new color. So we have the color saved uh, from the three that we have in our UI and we are going to be able to basically set the color to be painted onto this paint, uh, paintable object. Next 
I'm going to add this highlight property just so that we can highlight our wall. And to do this, we are going to have a public void toggle highlight method that will take a bool value. And we are going to have an object render dot material set float highlight. If this is true, we are going to set one, else we are going to set zero. This will uh, toggle the emission so that we can make our wall stand out when we, have it, when we have it selected so that we can show the player that this wall was selected and we are going to paint this wall. Now the paint coroutine is a coroutine that will use float current time. We are going to set it to zero. Now we are going to set object render dot material dot set color underscore paint color to be the new color. So this is the color that we have set for this wall to be painted using this color. Progress icon, toggle icon, and we are going to toggle it through. Now we haven't seen the script, so let me right click on this, go to the definition. This is simply an, uh, an image. We are going to have a progress icon and the parent uh, object. In start, we are going to access this image. We are going to be able to toggle it on or off, and we are going to use a filled image, and we are going to set this amount or how much it is filled through our coroutine so that we have this if we go to unity circular shape here, this will be an image. Uh, so this is a progress icon and this is set to be in the uh, hierarchy. We're going to have the image, image type will be filled and we are going to basically decrease the fill amount uh, to zero at the start of our coroutine and we are going to increase it slowly so that we have the circular UI uh, progress bar showing up and after it is done, we are going to simply toggle it off, disable it and the wall will be painted. So that's what our progress icon script will do. It will allow us to toggle the icon on and off and set the fill amount using this progress icon. So this, uh, this is image. We're going to call fill amount equals mathf.clamp and we're going to clamp the value that we pass in the set fill amount method. Okay, back to our paintable object. So at the start of our coroutine, we are going to toggle the icon on and we of course want the value there to be zero. Uh, so this is done through this toggle icon when we set it to true. And we are going to have while loop current time while this current time is less than painted delay, which was set by us to be 1.5. We will be able to set it through our prefab. So while it is less, the current time is less than painted delay, we are going to add to our current time plus equals time dot delta time. We are going to have float amount equals mathf.clamp. We are going to divide the current time by our delay so that we get the value from 0 to 1. And if we have this, we can set the progress icon set fill amount to this amount. And we can use object render material set float. And we are going to set paint amount to this amount from 0 to 1. We are going to return null because our curtain needs to return something. When this while loop is done, we are going to set the object render material set color to the new color. We are going to set material float paint amount back to zero, and we are going to set is painting to be false. Now this color value will be the original color. Uh, currently it is white, but if we set it to a new color, now this will be the basic color that we use, and we are going to be able to basically paint it again to a different color if we choose to. So is painting is false, so the boolean flag is false, allowing us to repaint this wall again. Progress icon toggle icon false, so we are going to hide our UI and we are going to call our action on done question mark dot invoke. And that's all there is to our paintable object script. So let me go back to Unity and add it. Okay, I'm going to select uh, my UI or actually I'm going to find my room. And I'm going to select one of those prefabs. I'm going to open it up. And all I need to do is drag my script, my paintable object. This will be uh, available for you from the GitHub repository. I will add it there. Now my prefab has this paintable object script on it and we can set the paint delay here. Okay, I'm going to go back. We can of course add it to our walls, to our door wall and to our window wall. Next, we need to have a player painter script which will be placed on our player. We can see that we will need to have a raycast. We are going to shoot a raycast to detect if we have hit a wall or not. We are going to also have a private layer mask layer mask. This will be the layer mask of our walls or of our paintable objects. Next, we are going to have a ray distance so that we can limit how far can we select a wall. And we're going to have a color, color to paint that we are going to select using our UI. Next, we are going to have a game object paint icon. Now this will be 
If we take in, uh, a look in Unity, this will be this paintbrush that we see in the center of our screen, and we are going to set the color of it to the color that we want to use to paint our wall. This is just a simple feedback to give the player uh, an idea of what color we are going to use. Okay, back to our script. We will have a paintable object, paintable reference, and we are going to have some audio clip and audio source to give the player some sound feedback. In the awake, we are going to access the audio source, we are going to have a set color method. We are going to set it through the UI. So when we click our image of a color inside our UI, our uh, UI will set the color on our uh, player painter script to the color from our image so that we can select this color to paint, uh, to use it to paint our walls. In the update, we are going to simply check if paintable object, so our a paintable object reference is not null, we are going to then toggle highlight false. And next we are going to have if statement, if physics is a cast, we are going to shoot a ray cast from our position of the player, forward direction, out will be the hit, so we are going to save the info if we have hit something in our ray cast hit, and we are going to have a ray distance and the layer mask here as well, so that we can uh, control how far we shoot the ray cast and what we can hit. Next we are going to have a paintable uh, equals hit dot collider get component the paintable object because we are going to only find the objects on the specific layer mask we can assume that they have this component if player uh, paintable is painting uh, if we are already painting the wall we do not want to do any of this code uh, below and the paintable new color is not equal to the current color that we have selected so if the wall is already this color we don't want to be able to repeatedly paint the wall into the same using the same color so else we are going to set the paint icon set active to be false if we have a wall that is not the same color and it is not being painted we are going to set paintable toggle highlights true so we want to highlight this wall we are going to set paint uh, icon set active to be true and we are going to set paint icon get component image dot color equals color to paint. So basically, we are going to make this uh, brush paint brush uh, of the same color that we want to use to paint our wall. And we are going to check using the new input system mouse current left button is pressed. If we are pressing the left mouse button, we are going to set paintable dot set color. So we set the color of our uh, paintable object the new color to be the color that we have selected using our UI. And we are going to uh, use start painting method on this paintable object to start our coroutine. Next, we are going to toggle the highlight off. We're going to add a listener to on done action event, and we're going to use handle painting uh, done. And this will simply stop our audio source. And we are going to play audio source play one shot paint clip so we are going to start playing some sound effect to indicate that we are painting when we are done we are going to stop this and of course uh, if uh, this recast was uh, unsuccessful we are going to set paint icon set active to be false so if we are not hitting a wall using our recast we want to hide the icon responsible for painting great let's go back to unity and let's add the highlights to our shader Okay, so let's select our shader. I'm going to maximize this. And what we want to use is the emission, since if we increase it, you can see in the preview that the material starts uh, to be a bit brighter. So we are going to create two colors here. So color one will be simply the black color. So if we drag it to the emission, nothing will happen here because this will be the default emission color that we have been using. Okay, now if we add a color again, and if we make it a bit brighter, and if we drag it here, we're going to see that it should become a bit brighter. Okay, so we are going to have a highlight property, so I'm going to select my blackboard, I'm going to add a boolean flag, and I'm going to add it, call it highlight. Okay. And now it will have this name underscore highlight. I'm going to drag it here and I'm going to drag the output of this to a branch node. So branch node is a simple if statement based on this Boolean flag. We are going to either use true or false. True is this white color. False is this black color. I'm going to add uh, the drag this branch output to the emission value and basically 
uh, by swapping this highlight value, we should be able to see that we can set this to default to be true or false. And you can see that the color in the branch changes as well as inside the preview. Okay, great. So I'm going to save my shader. I'm going to go back. Okay. And now since our uh, color is already being used by our player painter, I think we had this uh, highlight, toggle highlight to false and toggle highlight to true. All we need to do is add those scripts. So we have already added to our walls the script responsible for adding the paintable object. Now I will select simply my player capsule. So this is an object that uh, I use as my player representation. And I'm going to add here our uh, new player painter script. And basically it uses layer mask paintable. So if we click on the top right corner, edit layers, we have this sorting layer, not this layer as paintable layer. And all I need to do is select my wall and select the prefab and set this layer to be paintable. And I need to do the same with other objects in my game. And of course, uh, I would need to add to all of those the paintable object script like this pillar or the uh, wall that is uh, also containing the doors. I'm going to add paintable object and the walls that are uh, for the windows. I need to add here the paintable object as well. Okay, great. All of those have those paintable, uh, paintable object script and my player should now be uh, sending this raycast uh, of distance four using pa uh, paintable as the layer mask. The default color will be this reddish color and I'm going to have this paint icon as the image assigned from my uh, canvas. This will be this image of a brush. I will toggle it on and off. And the, there is the paint clip. This is a clip that will be the painting clip. Now this has this subtle uh, brush strokes that I will use to add some uh, sound effect. Okay, now we should be ready to test the game. So let me press play. Okay, and if I have everything correctly uh, set, I should be able to paint all the walls into this uh, brownish or reddish color. Now to be able to select the color from my simple UI, I will have the color panel, which will be simply a container for my color images and each image will have this color selection script. Now if I edit this we are going to see that it simply gets the reference to a image and we are going to be able to define hotkeys so one two and three keys we are going to use to swap those colors and I'm going to use public unity event color color selection event that I will use to expose this event and every time we use keyboard.current key was pressed this frame. So this is from the new input system. In the update, if we use this, I'm going to play some audio uh, using this coroutine. This will animate the button, place uh, the source uh, audio source, and I'm going to invoke this color selection event, unity event, and I'm going to pass the image dot color to basically pass the color of our image into our player painter script. Great. And I have simply added those three buttons. One has this bluish color, the second one has this yellowish, and the third one has this reddish color. And I have all, on all of those color selection script, I have selected those digit one, two, and three. So those are the uh, hotkeys that I will use to swap the color. Uh, and I will simply assign to our color selection event, our player capsule, and I will select the player painter and set color method to set the color on the uh, player painter on the player capsule. Okay, and now I should have this simple animation selecting the color and based on the color that I have selected, I will paint the wall. And as you can see, the brush icon also changes the color. And of course you can improve this uh, feedback for the player. But basically now if I select this yellow color and try to paint this uh, red wall, you can see that we can indeed do this because of the saving of our color inside another property and applying it by default for on the texture, while the rest of the walls have this standard white color as the base. And again, if we, we can paint all of the different 
objects and as you can see if this is a 3d object all the walls are being painted at the same time so this is why it is important for those walls to be modular and of course you can see this highlight that is a subtle white glow uh, so that we can see which wall is selected and you can see this normal map uh, affecting the light or affecting how we perceive this object that it has some details although this is just a simple quad okay great so this is it for this tutorial you should now know how to implement this game mechanic using our custom shader all the scripts should be in github repository linked uh, in the description of this video thanks a lot for watching if you have enjoyed this video leave a like leave a comment subscribe to the channel and if you want to support the channel, check out the Patreon page. The link will be in the description. See you in the next tutorial.